Hi everyone, it's the Nature Guy again back at Camp Asable. And we're back in the forest here behind the beaver ponds that are behind the Nature Center. I'm here today to talk to you about this incredible stump here. It's obviously a dead tree. You can't see it from there, but the top's broken off. It's pretty much hollow all the way through. But what's really interesting is we see a lot of black charcoal on the side, evidence that this has been involved in a forest fire. So I often ask pathfinders and uh, campers that I bring back here, how old do you think it is? Or how could we figure out how long ago it was that this tree burned? Now, of course, you can tell the age of a tree by the rings in the wood, but the wood's all burned here. So that's not going to tell us how old the tree is. But obviously, from its side, this was a big tree. But how long ago did it burn? We have to go to other trees to ask that question. Now, you can't see it from this view. But just over there, about 20 feet, there is a pine tree, an eastern white pine that's got to be this big around. And I've taken a corer and taken a sample out of the center of the tree and measured and counted the rings in that tree. And that living tree that had to have grown up after the fire, that tree is 115 years old, or it had 115 rings. And I did that experiment about 10 years ago. So that tree, living tree right over there, that grew up after this forest fire is 115 years old. So this amazing stump has been here for over 125 years. Now, if you go back in the history books about Michigan and the Great Lakes area, go back into the 1800s, 1871. In October, the Great Chicago Fire. Everyone knows about that. But on that very same day, in addition to Chicago burning, a whole bunch of Wisconsin burned across Lake Michigan, and a whole bunch of Upper Michigan burned, including probably Camp Asabo. And my guess is this tree stands as a testament to that huge fire that burned hundreds of thousands of acres across three different states. Now, there have been all sorts of questions asked about how that fire started. The legend is, of course, is the cow kicked over the lantern, um, and maybe there was a scared cow in all the commotion, I'm sure. Um, some have suggested that sparks flew across all the way from, uh, from the Wisconsin side and started fires in Michigan. That's a long way across the lake, but it was a very windy day. It was a very dry year. They hardly had any rain all summer, so it wouldn't have taken much to start the fire here in Michigan. There are a couple of other theories. Some of it may have been um, the result of the logging that was going on. And when you have logging and sawmills, there's all the slash that's left over and sometimes that's burned in small areas and maybe the big wind came and took one of those off and created the whole forest fire in northern Michigan. Another idea is that that same day was one of the meteor showers that occurs regularly on a cycle. And some say, I wonder if a meteor shower happened and two or three meteors happened, one in Wisconsin, one in Michigan, one in Chicago, and maybe that's what caused the fire. But there had been no evidence of a meteor shower causing a forest fire. And so that idea kind of fell by the wayside. But 20 years ago, they had that big meteor that hit in Russia, and huge forest fires resulted from that all across northern, northern uh, Russia in a conifer forest, much like what we have here, burned to the ground because of that meteor. So we'll probably never know what caused this tree, uh, the fire that caused this tree to die. But this tree does tell a very interesting story. And that kind of reminds me about our own lives. God has asked us to tell our story, to tell our neighbors and friends and relatives what God has done for us, because that's how they can learn what a great Heavenly Father we all have. Thanks very much for listening, and we'll see you next time.